and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if this is your very first time here I'm so excited that you found our little corner of the internet my name is Megan and I'm a 26 my birthday was yesterday I gotta remember year old mom to a 19 month old baby boy named Rowan and I've got baby number two on the way it's a girl her name is gonna be Juniper May and I'm doing July and today we're gonna be doing a pregnancy update which I'm really excited about I did a full first trimester recap so if you want to hear about my experience with a subchorionic hemorrhage and nausea and all of the first trimester yuckiness I'll leave that link right up here for you and today we're gonna be covering weeks 14 through 17 so I'm 17 weeks now and I'll start by showing you guys my baby bump so I feel like I'm massive compared to my pregnancy with Rowan I'll do like a side-by-side -side for you of a picture of me now versus a picture of me at 17 weeks with him I think I've gained about seven pounds at this point in my pregnancy, which was more than I had gained in my first pregnancy, but not something I'm concerned about, still very much within the range of normal. And I am doing a full like pregnant belly video. So I'm taking photos and videos of my belly every single week from four to probably 40, <laughs> depending on when I give birth weeks. So I'm really excited about that, but I wanted to give you a little sneak peek. And I'm pulling up my Pregnancy Plus app right now so I can give you a little update on baby first. I love this app. I didn't use it in my first pregnancy because I didn't know about it, but it's so cool because it has this like 3D model of your baby that you can like move around. And I always tell Rowan like, oh, we're playing with Sissy and you can like make the baby kick and stuff. So he loves that. Um, but it also has this button where you can see how big your baby actually is. So she doesn't fit on my phone screen anymore. According to this, and this does run a little bit big, so she's probably a little bit smaller. She is 5.6 inches and 6.7 ounces. Baby is practicing breathing with amniotic fluid and chest is moving in rhythm as if breathing air. That's crazy. Your baby's hearing has now developed so that it can hear sounds coming from outside the womb much clearer. Myelin, a protective coating of the nerves is being produced. Let's see what the size comparison is. Okay, so this is slice of cake. That's kind of ambiguous. A baby hedgehog or the classic fruit would be a pomegranate. So that's baby. As far as I know, she's doing good. I can feel her kicking in there now, which is crazy. It's still very light. I actually expected it to be stronger by now because with Rowan, my placenta was in the front and with her, it's in the back. So I thought that I would be feeling stronger kicks, but I'd say it's about the same to my first pregnancy. I just started feeling them earlier. Like I started feeling them at like 12 or 13 weeks. It was crazy. But I like knew what I was looking for or feeling for I guess and then for a while I was like was that really like what it was but at my last ultrasound I was like watching her kick and feeling it so I know for sure I am actually feeling her kick as far as I go um, I guess I'll give you guys some updates on things that I talked about in my last pregnancy update um, the subchorionic hemorrhage has completely gone away the blood that was still left in there was absorbed by my body so that's a huge relief because I was kind of living in fear of like having another small hemorrhage and like not knowing if everything was okay for a few days until like get an ultrasound and the whole thing but my last ultrasound showed that i'm all clear so that's great and it's not supposed to have any other effects on the pregnancy it's not related to any kind of like birth defects or other complications so that's really great news if you've been following along you'll know that the biggest thing that i dealt with in the first trimester was nausea and food aversion um and i'm very happy to report that that's mostly gone now I do tend to still feel a little bit sick in the evenings, but nothing like what it was when it was just like all day, could barely function. I was just eating cold pasta from the fridge because that was all I could handle. There are certain things that still don't like sound good to me, but I wouldn't say that it's like restricting my eating anymore because I can like pretty much make myself eat whatever. So like sometimes coffee sounds good, sometimes it doesn't. Um, chocolate, like I don't crave chocolate the way I used to, which I guess is fine. I kind of miss it, TBH. But yeah, I'm just thankful to be a little bit more of a functional human because it was rough there for a while. If you haven't seen my how to survive the first trimester with a toddler video and you're also in that boat, <laughs> I'll leave a card up here too because man, it was rough. I don't know if you can hear Rowan playing downstairs with my father-in-law. So as far as second trimester symptoms go, the biggest thing that I'm experiencing right now or like the worst thing is tailbone pain. Oh my gosh, the tailbone pain. I remember this with Rowan, but I don't remember it hitting me until the third trimester. And I've already been dealing with it for weeks now. So I'd say it came like right around 14 weeks and it just, 
Oh, it hurts so bad. Anytime I have to like go from a sitting to standing position, I have to like brace myself and count down and like hype myself up to get up because it hurts really bad and it's just normal. It's because there is more relaxin, which is a hormone in your body when you're pregnant to just like help everything down there kind of like move and prep for giving birth. Um, but unfortunately that does lead to some tailbone pain. So I got the Freedom Mom perineal cushion. It's basically like a hemorrhoid pillow and I've been sitting on it pretty much all the time. I actually wish that I had it with me right now. I should have brought it up to film this video, but I didn't. But I used it in the car on our road trip to Portland. I took it with us like into the hotel. Um, I use it if I'm like watching TV or if I'm sitting down while Rowan's eating. It is a lifesaver. So very thankful for that. Ooh, I hate that tailbone pain. I'm also experiencing some back pain, which I feel like is pretty early to be experiencing that. But maybe because I'm so much bigger than I was last time and I'm like already protruding forward quite a bit. Um, my back hurts if I stand up for too long. So that's kind of annoying, but it's not like super bad or anything. So it doesn't really interrupt my life. Something that is <laughs> interrupting my life is peeing when I sneeze. I hate this so much. It happened when I was pregnant with Rowan, but not this bad. And then when I had him, even like immediately postpartum, it went away. And so I kind of like forgot about it. But this time around, almost every time I sneeze, I'm like crossing my legs and hoping that I don't pee myself. And I wear panty liners. So like, it's not a huge deal if it happens. But sometimes if I forget to wear a panty liner or like if I have a sneezing fit because I have really bad allergies, um, I have to change my underwear and my pants, which is just lovely. So many times I've been in the downstairs bathroom and been like, Matt, I need new underwear and pants. <laughs> Of course, I'm like exercising my pelvic floor and everything, but I think some amount of that is just kind of inevitable with having a baby. There's like a lot in there going on. A lot sitting on top of your bladder. Something else is that I've been so hungry. Just like, especially late at night, like I have to have a snack at like 9.30 or 10 before I go to bed, or I'm up at three in the morning and like down in the kitchen eating a bowl of cereal because it gets to the point where like it hurts my stomach because I'm so hungry. And like, I'm not skimping on the meals. Like I'm eating a lot of food. I'd say I eat probably five meals, like five small to medium-ish meals per day, plus snacks whenever I want snacks. But yeah, that middle of the night, like just, your stomach feels like it's eating itself is not super fun. So far, I have not really had too bad of a time with body dysmorphia, which I really struggled with with Rowan's pregnancy, but I think that was more in the third trimester. So I'm kind of waiting to see, you know, how that comes into play, if at all. I think I have a better mindset about it this time around because last time I was so scared of the unknown of like what my postpartum recovery and body would be like. And it just felt so out of my control because Rowan was a wonderful surprise. Um, but this baby was planned. And so I think I had more like mental fortitude of like, I know it's gonna happen. I'm kind of choosing for this to happen. Um, and because this is probably my last pregnancy, I really wanna like celebrate my bump this time. So I've been trying a lot of like, you know, more form-fitting dresses. I'm fully in maternity pants now. I cannot wear any of my old pants. So I have three pairs of maternity pants and my Lululemon Align leggings. Was it in my last, it might've been in my last pregnancy update or a vlog, I asked you guys what the best leggings were for maternity. And so many of you guys said the Lululemon Align leggings and they're pricey. So I was like, I don't know, but everybody said that you can just wear your pre-pregnancy size and they're super stretchy and then you can wear them after too. So I got mine used on ThreadUp for like 45 bucks and oh my gosh, you guys did not steer me wrong. Those things are amazing. They're so comfortable. I heard there's like an Amazon dupe too that I wanna try out soon. So I'll link both of them down below in case you're interested because seriously a lifesaver for me. I'm in a weird spot where I didn't really have to buy like cold weather clothes for my last pregnancy because I wasn't showing until spring, but this time I popped so much faster. So I'm struggling with like what to wear because a lot of the time I just feel kind of like lumpy and frumpy in all of my layers to try to stay warm. But this is fun. I have a little cardigan on that I just like 
Ow, my tailbone! Didn't uh, button all the way, and then this dress. The other thing that I experience when I stand up other than tailbone pain is like dizziness or lightheadedness. And this is especially if I'm going from like laying down to standing. So if I'm like laying on the couch playing on my phone or whatever, and then I go to standing up, I get so lightheaded if I forget to do it slowly. I really need to like go up to sitting, wait for a little bit and then go up to standing. Otherwise I like start to black out and it's kind of scary and I have to like crouch down to the floor real quick. I asked my doctor about it and she said, you know, also pretty normal. Your heart is working 40 to 50 times harder at this point in pregnancy than it was pre-pregnancy. So it's just a blood flow thing, but I really need to be mindful of that and like have that be just a part of my daily life that I like get up very slowly and remember to do that. Mentally, I'm doing pretty good. Um, I feel like I'm fully in nesting mode already, which is crazy because I'm not even halfway through yet. But like we have a crib, the crib set up, we bought the double stroller, we did get the Mockingbird, um, and I'll do a review of it when I've like had a chance to use it for longer, but they didn't sponsor me or anything. I bought it used with my own money. But we took Rowan out for a spin with it like yesterday, I think, just like as a trial run and we liked it, but can't give a full review yet. I just bought her car seat this morning. I am not getting an infant bucket seat. I know that was very controversial in my what I'm buying for my second baby video, um, but we didn't use Rowan's infant seat like outside of the car almost at all. So we all need different things, I guess. I just, I baby wear a lot and he wasn't a car sleeper. So it wasn't like I was worried about like transferring him or anything because he just, he would just scream in the car and then he was happy when he was picked up. So we'll see if Juniper's any different. Mostly I'm just excited. She's got a closet full of cute little clothes. We're working on the nursery. I just got paint samples yesterday. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw me like swatching different paint samples and I ordered wallpaper and her name sign. So there'll probably be a nursery makeover video coming pretty soon. But yeah, I'm just, I'm just excited. I am excited to meet her, but I'm also not rushing it. The last pregnancy I was like, let's do it, let's go. Like I'm ready, I wanna meet him, I wanna have him in my arms. And I was very impatient, especially because of everything I was going through with like my body image. And this time I'm kind of just like soaking it in a little bit more. It's my last pregnancy. I think, you know, things could change, but this is probably my last pregnancy and it's the last time, it's just gonna be the three of us, Matt Rowan and I, so spending all the time with him. And of course I'm excited to meet her and there are days where I'm like, is it July yet? Is it July yet? But as a whole, I'm just like trying to be present in the season of life that I'm in instead of wishing it away for the next thing, which is totally something I tend to do. So that's gonna be it for my pregnancy update. I will catch you with another one at probably like 20, 21 weeks after our anatomy scan. Hopefully everything goes well. Send lots of good thoughts and vibes and prayers our way. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe down below if you haven't already and I'll see you all in the next video.